when Nathan the prophet came to him after he had gone into Bathsheba. If you don't know the story, it's one of those stories in the Bible that makes you go, woo, there's bad stuff in the Bible. <laughs> David sees a woman across the way. He likes what he sees. He sleeps with the woman. He's the king, for goodness sakes, right? He can have anyone he wants. In fact, he had plenty of wives and concubines. But he wanted Bathsheba, who belonged to Uriah. And she was found to be pregnant. So David, nice, kind David, who loves his neighbor as himself not in this instance, calls for Jer Uriah to come home in hopes that this sin would not be out for everyone to experience and see. But Uriah stays true to form. He is a soldier of soldiers. And he sleeps outside because he's a soldier. He's not going in to be with his wife as his other companions on the field are not with their wives. So David has to contemplate and has to think and has to create. And out of this heart that was supposedly so good came this horrible thought that he had to get rid of Uriah. And so he calls for Uriah to be put to death. Just send him to the front of the line where we know he'll die. And David thinks he got away with it. Until God's prophet comes to him and tells him a nice little story. A parable in which David then calls forth the judgment. The parable was about a rich man who had sheep, many sheep, but he had someone come for dinner. And instead of killing his own sheep, he went over to his neighbor who had but one. And he took that sheep, he put it to death and fed his friends, and David became irate. And he said, this is horrible. That man should die. And Nathan looked at him and said, that man is you. From that experience that David Penn's created me a clean heart, as we know it, the 51st Psalm. That's the psalm we need more often in our life. Sin piles up on all of us. Can you put the picture up here, Travis? Do you know what that is? Can you really tell? It's a Pyrex bowl, probably from my house. And it's probably been sitting there for two weeks. No, one week, because I've only been gone one week. And all of that is the crud left in the bottom of the bowl. And how do you get rid of the crud in the bottom of the bowl? You can scrub it all you want. But the best way to do it, my mother taught me, is you put it down in water, put water in the pan, right? Let it soak overnight, and what happens? It all comes up pretty easily. A few little places need to be scrubbed, but it's that soaking in the water, it's that soaking that helps to relieve that which has been built up. That is sin, my friends. Sin has been built up on each one of us, and sometimes it's a lot deeper than you think. It's a lot tougher than you think. It's hard to get rid of. The people of Israel thought, oh, we'll just fast for it. We'll get rid of our sin by fasting. We'll go make a few sacrifices on the altar of the Lord and then it will be gone. Right? And what does God say? That doesn't work. You can fast all you want. It's not going to work. Behold, you fast when they can quarrel and divide to the gift with wicked fists. Fasting like yours this day will not make your voice be heard on high. Is this the fast that I choose? A day for a person to humble himself? Is it to bow down his head like a rush and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Will you 
statutes, to loose the bonds of the wicked of wickedness, and undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free and to break every yoke, to love your neighbor as yourself. Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house? To love your neighbor as yourself? When you see the naked, to cover him and not to hide yourself from your own flesh? Then shall your light break forth like the dawn and your healing like spring up steadily. Your righteousness shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be at your rear guard, then you shall call, and the Lord will answer, and shall cry, and he will say, Here I am. What Lent is all about is that trek from here to the cross, so that our sin, which is much, would be washed away, and how we treat our neighbor as ourselves. Or in the waters of baptism, as we soak ourselves in God's word, that it would be loosened by everything Jesus has done for us. When David writes, created me a clean heart, O God, he knows that he has no ability on his own to create that heart. He has no ability on his own to come before God and truly be recreated. The word that's used in the Hebrew is the same word that's used in Genesis, which means that there was nothing before. In other words, when we come before God and we say, create in us a clean heart, Lord, I am contrite. I am sorry for all that I've done. I repent of what I've done. We open the door for God to come in and to begin the renewal process with us. So it's more than an action when we feed the hungry. But it comes from the heart inside of us that has been wiped clean of all the sin. As we lay ourselves before God, it's God that wipes us clean tonight. It's God that takes away everything that divides you from one another, that divides us from our neighbor down the street, that divides us in the congregation, that divides us from him and us. We lay ourselves open before him tonight. As David laid himself open before God and asked to be cleansed. Wash me, David writes. And through, though from my wickedness, I shall be cleansed of my sin. Purge me from my sin, and I shall be pure. Wash me, and I shall be made clean indeed. And we could say, Lord, give us that new heart again. The heart that we've given over to him, to love him with all of our heart, and with all of our soul, and with all of our mind, and with all of our strength. And then, as we are washed clean, we can truly love our neighbor as ourself. From dust you have come, and to dust you shall return. From sin you have come, and from sin you are forgiven. May we all, during this season of Lent, look to the cross in new ways. Lay ourselves open each day and allow him to soak us in his forgiveness and life. Amen. Gracious Lord, we thank you and praise you for all the gifts you have showered upon us. Bring us life anew and create in each one of us clean hearts. Amen. Amen.